Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our daily devotions here on Friday, December 16th. It is Friday. What a week. What a week this has wrought amongst us here with the uh, snow and such. <clears throat> My beard is absolutely frazzled. I uh, I didn't oil it or anything today, so conditioned it, but I didn't oil it. Um, you don't see these things till you're looking at yourself in a camera with uh, lighting. Mirror doesn't show it. Uh, I got caught up in a in a thing here on on Facebook from another pastor that was talking about Augustine and the sacraments and the understanding of. Aristotelian logic, or I guess it's Neoplat Neoplatonist or Neoplatonic uh, understanding signs being arbitrary or man-made. Uh, it's fairly complex stuff, so I won't go into it too deeply, but I'm trying to, trying to explain to somebody else um, why Augustine spoke of uh, some of the sacraments as signs. Um, well, what he meant is they were the thing, uh, but a, th a sign can be a sign and it can be a thing also. It's not, we don't teach philosophy uh, or schools of philosophy anymore in our, in our schools. I didn't have it. We don't teach, we don't teach our, our children philosophy, which is um, the, the uh, I'm going to say the art of thinking uh, because it is an art, but an understanding of why we think what we think and how mankind has dealt with that through the ages. Philosophy. Um, it, it, it's, with philosophy comes logic and reason. Um, and then the communication of that, which is rhetoric. Those are those are things we don't teach children. I mean, they didn't... Uh, I, I, I may have gotten a, a, a just a wee bit of rhetoric in um, high school in... Uh, in uh, uh, oral communications class and written communications class, but um, we don't we don't take the time to teach rhetoric. And you know when you're when you reach a certain age in your life and you realize that you have a deficiency in something and you work to learn it, it's not easy. the The brain loses some of its plasticity. We can still think about things, um, uh, but we we but but the ability to learn and understand new concepts is not. Uh, as easy as it once was, um, rhetoric. I, 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 you know, I, this is this is the the reason that um, as as a uh, well as as a pastor when I had a school I was encouraging at, at Marlette I was encouraging the school to go back to a classical education format where uh, logic philosophy, reason, uh, and rhetoric are part of the part of the uh, curriculum, part of what's taught, because it, it, we need these things. And, and that's part of the reason we have, wow, I'm going to go off here, guys. Part of the reason that we, we, we are in the situations we're in is because people don't think, and they, they, don't, they don't understand how to think and how to put together an argument and, and um, how to take, um, how to, how to, how to take a thought that they have when it conflicts with what's going on in the world and to turn those two, to, to work those two together and put together a, a reasoned argument. And we wind up, where we wind up is arguing from uh, emotion, which is arguing like animals. Uh, I feel this, I think that. Um, therefore, because I think it, it's right. Even if it goes in the face of everything else, um, everything that's been understood uh, by by mankind, humanity, for for millennia, um, even if it flies in the face of that, because I feel it and because I espouse it, I speak it. Therefore, it's true. Um, and we find ourselves in what's called postmodernism, where where truth is not based upon uh, empirical evidence or the documentation of empirical evidence, or a well-reasoned argument that can be logically followed from beginning to end, but rather by what I feel and so what I say and what is spoken or uh, in, in also written. Um, 
uh, becomes truth. And the foundation of that truth is that someone of authority said it or spoke it. We went through a lot of that here a couple of years ago, and we still are. We're still suffering with that. Um, anyway, I, see, that's what happens. I get on Facebook on my on my phone while I'm waiting for you guys, and then I wind up somewhere else. So good morning. Glad you're here with us on this on this uh, this Friday morning, December sixteenth, as we prepare for the weekend. The snow is not ending. It was supposed to be over yet this morning, um, and it's still coming down, although the radar shows that it's, it's coming off of us now. We did not get the projected 10 to 15 inches. I think we were, uh, yesterday we were done at, at, at 5, um, and then uh, overnight maybe an inch more. Um, this, and I say overnight, but it was really this morning. Um, so it... it uh, yeah, so we didn't have quite the severity. We did have the ice that they that they predicted, and the, the children did wind up with two days off of school. But they're back in school today, and he had his early gym class and a full day of school today, which is a good thing. Um, I don't know how many snow days they've got on the calendar. March is not here yet, and March tends to be um, a very snowy month. So, um, yeah, let's see who's here. Um me still not being able to type. Good morning. Good. No, that's right. Good morning. Yeah, that's right. Um, Jerry, good morning to you. Debbie, Aunt Ann and Grant, good morning to you guys. Jamie and Bob, good morning to you. Renee, good morning. Jill and John, hello, hello. Uh, I I heard you guys got closer to ten inches up there by by Rhinelander overall. I pray you're dug out and things are okay there. Kathy, good morning to you. Michael, good morning. Uh, cold front moving in. 60s, rather humorous. Okay. Um, yeah, 60, cold front. Yeah, right, cold, 60. Um, and there's Bonnie chiming in saying good morning. Uh, 20 degrees and snow in Irma. Yep, that's right. Um, and, yeah, Ryder, Ryder, um, Ryder spilt his stomach lining here right before we uh before the hymn started so things got a little chaotic around here i don't know she tried to tell me it's because i gave him a piece of cheese 10 hours ago um what upsets a dog's stomach who knows all right uh let's uh let's let's go ahead and get involved in this um if you have your lutheran service book page 295 daily prayer for individuals and families I have my treasury right here in front of me, the morning order of individual and families. And so, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Uh, let's see here. Our psalm this morning, Psalm 149, Psalm 149. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. His praise in the assembly of the godly. Let Israel be glad in his maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing, making melody to him with tambourine and lyre. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He adorns the humble with salvation. Let the godly exalt in glory. Let them sing for joy on their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their throats and two-edged swords in their hands to execute vengeance on the nations, punishments on the peoples to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute on them the judgment written. This is honor for all his godly ones. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. His praise in the assembly of the godly. Let the children of rejoice in their king. 
<clears throat> Let high praises of God be in their throats and two-edged swords in their hands. Hmm. Well, I mean, it's it's a call to to battle. Verse 7, to execute, the, the, the reason for having the two-edged sword in their hands, to execute vengeance on the nations and punishments on the peoples. Kind of, kind of interesting that way. I'm not sure, I'm not going to, I'm not going to dig into that too much. I'm just going to leave that as it is. I think I will. Yep, we'll just go, we'll just go on this morning to our reading in Isaiah, which is chapter 32, verses 1 through 20. Maybe we'll see a connection back to the psalm here. So Isaiah 32, 1 through 20, you remember we're, we're going through here just the way it is, and sometimes it's judgment, uh, condemnation, and the results of it, and sometimes it's um, the promises of salvation. Um, and that's the thing. It's always, it's always uh, the, the, the promise of salvation always follows um, the threat of judgment. A uh, king, uh, uh, behold, 32, 1, 1 through 20. Behold, a king will reign in righteousness and princes will rule in justice. Each will be like a hiding place from the wind, a shelter from the storm, like streams of water in a dry place, like the shade of a great rock in a weary land. Then the eyes of those who see will not be closed and the ears of those who hear will give attention. The heart of the hasty will understand and know, and the tongue of the stammerers will hasten to speak distinctly. The fool will no more be called noble, nor the scoundrel said to be honorable. <clears throat> For the fool speaks folly, and his heart is busy with iniquity to practice ungodliness, to utter error concerning the Lord, to leave the craving of the hungry unsatisfied, and to deprive the thirsty of drink. As for the scoundrel, his devices are evil. He plans wicked schemes to ruin the poor with lying words. Even when the plea of the needy is right, but he who is noble plans noble things, and on noble things he stands. Rise up, you women who are at ease. Hear my voice. You complacent daughters, give ear to my speech. In little more than a year, you will shudder. You will... You complacent woman, for the grape harvest fails, the fruit harvest will not come. Tremble, you women who are at ease, shudder with your complacent ones. Strip, uh, strip and make yourselves bare, and tie sackcloth around your waist. Beat your breasts for the pleasant fields, for the fruitful vine, for the soil of my people, growing up in thorns and briars. Yes, for all the joyous houses in the exultant city. For the palace is forsaken, the populous city deserted, the hill and the watchtower will become dens forever. A joy of wild donkeys, a pasture of flocks, until the Spirit is poured upon from us, poured upon us from on high, and the wilderness becomes a fruitful field, and the fruitful field is deemed a forest. Then justice will dwell in the wilderness, and righteousness abide in the fruitful field. And the effect of righteousness will be peace. And the result of righteousness, quietness and trust forever. And my people will abide in a peaceful habitation, in secure dwellings and in quiet resting places. And it will hail when the forest falls down. And the city will be utterly laid low. Happy are you who sow beside all waters, who let the feet of the ox and the donkey range free. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hmm. I'm not seeing anything here either. This is this is kind of rough stuff. I mean, here's the thing. Whenever whenever we look to scripture, whenever we examine scripture, we we Lutheran theology teaches that we divide it into law and gospel, right? Um, and sometimes that's an artificial thing, but uh, that, that we look for what, what um, shows our sin and the condemnation for it and what shows our Savior 
in the in the the uh, uh, forgiveness and life that comes from that. Um, another way of looking at this is to say, um, where does it point to Christ? Because uh, everything everything ultimately in Scripture is about Jesus, um, about the 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 salvation that God is working throughout the history of mankind to take fallen Adam and his offspring, which is you and I, um, and reconcile us to God, our Heavenly Father. And then what will that be like? Um, and, and so sometimes you come upon a text and it's like, I, I don't get it. Um, so then you have to take it apart and you have to look. Well, This, this first part in verses 1 through 8, um, Behold, a king will reign in righteousness, and princes will rule in justice. Well, that's, uh, that's it's a clear point to Christ, right? Um, he is our king, uh, and God reigns in righteousness, right? Um, so that's clearly pointing to uh, to Christ. But then each will be hiding, each will be like a hiding place from the wind, a shelter from the storm. Okay, like streams of water in a dry place, like the shade of a great rock in a weary land. Okay, so so the king ruling in righteousness, the princes ruling in justice, shelter the people, bring protection like a like a like a place uh, to hide from a storm, um, like shade during the heat of the day. Um, uh, um, then the eyes of those who see will not be closed, and the ears of those who hear will give attention. Okay, well, uh, these are our ears being opened, right? And and previously Isaiah had spoken about um, the seers having their the, the prophets having their ears, eyes closed, and the seers having their heads covered so they would not see and would not know. Um, but now the eyes are open um, and, the, and the, the ears of those who hear are attending, are listening. Um, how many times does Jesus say in the scriptures, let he who have ears hear? Um, the heart of the hasty will understand and know, and the tongue of the stammerers will hasten to speak distinctly, right? The truth is being spoken. And it is God who is enabling the tongue of the stammerer. Uh, the fool will no more be called noble, nor the scoundrel said to be honorable. For the fool speaks folly, and his heart is busy with iniquity, practicing ungodliness and uttering error concerning the Lord. These are the false teachers, right? Um, the, the 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 ones in uh, in in the in in Jerusalem who have said, you know, God will not strike a man, God will not punish evil. That's foolishness. Um, so so we go through there, and we can see both the coming of Christ and the condemnation of those who have failed to maintain and, and, and keep the truth of God's word. Um, and then there's this stuff about women. Uh, Rise up, you women who are at ease. Hear my voice. You complacent daughters, give ear to my speech. And, that, and, and he's talking about the, the fall of, really, it's, it's, it's got to be the fall of Jerusalem uh, and of, of Israel and of Judea. Um, because we're talking about the crops not growing, um, the, the harvest, the fruit harvest will not come. Um, and, and instead of instead of you know sitting there in complacency, right, um, remaining in in sin, if you will, um, instead uh, rise up, strip yourself, and and take off your your comfortable garments, put on the sackcloth of mourning. Right and and beat your breast for the pleasant fields and the fruitful vine. Cry out to the Lord for mercy. Um, turn turn from where you're at. Repent and and uh, turn back. Um, uh, 
because the, the soil of my people is growing up in thorns and briars. The palace is forsaken, the populace deserted. Uh, the hill and the watchtower are, are become dens, places for, for animals to dwell instead of people. Um, animals, the joy of wild donkeys and a pasture of, flock, for of flocks, you know, the, the city. Think of, a, think of an abandoned town and the animals are just doing whatever they want. Sleeping where they will, eating what they will, and, you know, until the Spirit is poured upon us from on high, and the wilderness becomes a fruitful field. Now, it, it is Christ who, in his ascension, says, I will send back to you the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. And it is on the day of Pentecost that that Spirit comes. Uh, the, the Spirit comes, the, the Spirit that we receive in our baptisms, the Spirit of, of Christ and God, of our Father and, and his Son. Um, he, the Holy Spirit, comes, um, and then Justice will dwell in the wilderness, and righteousness abide in the land. Um, and the effect of righteousness will be peace. And the result of righteousness, quietness, and trust forever. And my people, peace, my people will abide in a peaceful habitation. This is the promise of the coming of Christ. Right? What do the angels say on the night when Jesus is born? Well, uh, uh, good news right, uh, for men on earth, um, a child is born um, and, and, and brings peace. Friends, it, it, it's not easy text to delve through. Um, it would be easy text to pray through. It would be easy for us to give thanks for the king that comes to rule and Justice and his princes, or in righteousness and his princes and justice, which is just a repetition, um, and then to uh, give thanks for the the shelter that we have in Christ Jesus. He is our rock, um, and that the that the false teachers are cast down, and that we are uh, we hear the the ones who speak the truth now um, to lament uh, the loss of of of. Uh, Easy living, I guess. The, 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 to lament the loss of the of the harvest uh, at that time, um, and to call on God for mercy, to repent, uh, pray for repentance, um, and then to give thanks again for the the coming of the Spirit. Thanks be to God that He sent His Holy Spirit upon us, poured out from on high, um, and and now the the fruitful field has returned, um, even a forest. Um, and that his justice has come in the, in the coming of Christ. Um, happy are you who sow beside all waters, who let the feet of the ox and the donkey range free. Um, that, that we, we live in such a supply and abundance of God's grace. You know, we don't even have to fence it in, but uh, it, we can seek it out. It's not an easy text. It's not an easy text, and I, I think I'm going to leave it right there. But it does point us to Christ at the beginning. Behold the king coming in righteousness, and um, uh, and, it, and, it, and we leave on the same note. Happy are you when you sow beside all waters, right? Besides the, beside the water of life, which is the life-giving water of baptism, right? You who were dead in your trespasses now uh, washed in that in that forgiving flood of Christ's blood, which restores us uh, to him, returns us to him, and gives us all God's grace. Amen. Let's look to our prayer of the day. Worthy are you, O Lord our God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you have created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. Give us the faith to behold the majesty of your presence in simple words, simple water, and simple bread and wine. As you come to us in the very body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, that's interesting. See, you move into the prayer and then you begin to see things you hadn't seen before. 
the grape harvest fails. But don't forget, grapes is wine, and wine is for the joy of man, right? And so there is a sorrow in the grape harvest failing greater than just not having grapes. It means no joy. We'll leave it there. We'll leave it there. Let's continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father, Almighty. From thence He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And for ourselves and others on this Friday, Friday morning, Friday morning. Gracious Lord, adorable Savior, this morning I praise you who redeemed me through your sacrifice on Calvary, purchasing me to be your own. Grant that I may serve you with a willing heart, and untiring devotion to show my appreciation of your great love for me. Make me an instrument of consecrated service to you, and let all I do today bring glory to your holy name. Help me by your grace and through the strength coming from you to resist each temptation to sin. Do not let me deny your name or ever be ashamed of you. Enrich today with a genuine Christian joy and sincere appreciation of your goodness and your peace which fills the heart and mind through faith in your redeeming cross. Wherever an encouraging word is needed, let me give it. Whenever a helping hand is needed to lift up burden, make it mine already, or make mine ready. Guide my footsteps in your ways, in ways that are pleasing to you. May my whole day be dedicated to you, my Savior and my Shepherd. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we ask your mercy upon those who suffer, whether it be uh, whether it be the effects of age or illness, or simply the doubts of hearts and minds, we ask Lord that you strengthen those who call upon your name, that you encourage those who suffer in the same way who do not know your name, that by your Holy Spirit they would be called to it and to and also a share in the joy that we have in you. We pray especially this day for Pat and Lois, Anne, Brianne, Rose. Bob, Mike, Megan, Ezra, Neely, and all who call upon your most holy name. Grant them strength and peace through your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to direct its beginning, uh, to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, that brings our devotion for this Friday morning to a close. God's peace be with you. And we will see you back here tomorrow for our devotion. Uh, Friday, uh, Saturday morning already. Hey, God's peace be with you. And we'll see you then.